particularly dealt with who are really interested in that area representing players? There are a number, mm-hmm. and, and from all different clubs. Are they? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and this is an important thing about the negotiations because I could go in with my legal training and my mm-hmm. uh, hard work and homework mm-hmm. um, going into those, but nothing was more effective than having players out there articulating their right. position and their concerns. And to other players? To, to the NRL. To the NRL itself, yeah. Yeah, yeah funding up and saying we... And that's, mm-hmm. that's where those negotiations really took off mm-hmm. was when they took... Centre stage yeah, and said, yeah. Can you remember any names? This is what we need. Well, Cameron Smith was involved, right? Michael yeah. Crocker was involved. I'll give him uh, that. <laughs> give him that. <laughs> Tick. 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 Yeah. Jared, Jared, Hain, Jared Hain was involved, but, but the Hain. most important person at that stage was Clint Newton, who, yeah. who had been with Melbourne Storm, of course, when they won a premiership, you might mm-hmm. recall, and then um, went to overseas and was playing in England. Yeah. He then came back and was playing um, with Penrith at the time yep. and had been involved in the Players Association when he'd formerly been um, in Sydney. Right. Um, not only a fantastic advocate in his own right, but a man who was able to rally yeah, the yeah, troops yeah, behind yeah, yeah, him yeah. Uh, and bring those into the negotiations in a very I mean, effective way. Did, did you have any rugby league background? Essentially, no, apart no, from my no. love of the game and no. my constant and, spectating. And, and is that no. a good or a bad thing into this situation, to this pool? That uh, I don't know that it was good or bad because no. I, I wasn't employed they to play see, rugby league. No, no, no they <laughs> see you as an expert in your field, right. so that's that. Yeah. Yeah. So it begs the key question in all this, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, who's your team? I don't have a team, Chris, and I think you know you the You can say that now. Now that you're not on the job, you can tell us, <laughs> it's, it's, David. It's, it's a safe <laughs> space. <laughs> there, there's there's a long and twisted story behind why I don't have a team, and we don't have time today, Chris. And I don't want to abbreviate that in any but way. Before he but goes I, in there, th- yeah. this this varies. Like we all have a team, we grow up with a team, we're blooded to the team, and then you get people like Vossi who have got two or three teams, and then we'll flip and say I've got no teams. We all know he's a South supporter, right? Right, right. Uh, and there are some that do have their second favourite team. You know, I would say the West Tigers because my dad was a Magpie supporter. Second Thanks, favourite sir. team. You hate the Dragons. I don't care. That's right. right. But no team. No team. So you can watch rugby league and just enjoy it for itself. Every team I love watching, yeah. Incredible. The only, thing I want to, <laughs> the only thing I want to say about this is that David and I were at Brookvale Oval in 1990 when Balmain Tigers were playing Manly Ring of Seagulls. And that game is indelibly etched in everyone's memory yeah. because it's when Eddie Ward put Blocker in the sim bin and Blocker patted Eddie on the head. Oh, I remember right? that, yeah. Now, Manly went on to win the game. Yeah. And I think the, the clinching try, I was crestfallen. And Dave was actually on the Brookie Hill, actually behind the goalpost from memory, and he was windmilling a la Pete Townsend with excitement <laughs> uh, at Manly scoring, but apparently has no club. Hmm. It's, it's actually a misinterpretation of what took place. So okay. I wasn't windmilling in excitement <laughs> of Manly scoring. I was windmilling in excitement of Chris's team being beaten. Right? Ah, 